Hey everyone. <laughs> uh, so what do we got going on today? Um, we're gonna be working on some Judge Dredd stuff, but first, uh, I got I got this in the mail. I got this Swamp Thing, uh, Cave Carson, uh, Part Four: of The Milk Wars. So I assume if I have it, then it's coming out soon. So if if you see it, if you see it, pick it up. Check it out. Langdon Foss did the art. Uh, he killed it. I, I've promoted it before in the stream. Um, we also... We got an uh, exclusive YouTube comment coming. Uh, I am aware that my car camera is mirrored. That is so that when I point to things like that address up there, I can actually point to that thing <laughs> without being like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's good for, for pointing and bad for promoting books. Who knows? This is amateur hour right now. That's what this is. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. So, yeah. We have we have that. That's coming out. Um, Cave Carson Volume 2 came just came out. Uh, Final Order Cutoff for The Realm. And uh, Rick and Morty Presents vo uh, Issue 1 was Monday. But you can probably still get your order in. If you're like really nice to your LGS, <laughs> I should point at things more. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, so now, uh, I know what you guys are thinking like, Oh, and we're working on today. We're working on, uh, judge dread stuff. Um, it's a, uh, subscriber suggestion from the boys. He is a subscriber and he put, in uh, the Discord that he wanted to do some dread stuff, so we're gonna we're gonna hopefully finish it off today. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. You're thinking, Nick, you're like, you know, not a human slug. You seem like you're kind of successful. Like maybe there are some people in your life that care about you, some friends, some family, whatever. Certainly. You have a Valentine's Day, Valentine. But let me tell you, good sir, let me tell you, the only Valentine I have is the love. <laughs> yeah, we're doing Judge Dredd. <laughs> I can't, I can't find the right. Uh, are we left? Are we? Are we right? Am I turning my head right? Okay, the love. Yeah, we're doing some Judge Dredd. Uh, Judge Dredd's amazing. I we're gonna be doing Judge Dredd. I th I feel like on and off this whole this whole stream. Um, uh, I also kind of like like this, like like my head's real tall. I don't know. This is who man. This is good content right here. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get serious. Everyone's serious now. We're making comic books. It's serious business. Um, Judge Tread never forgets to hydrate. Yeah. Uh, so the only thing I've done to this since you last saw it was uh, I cleared all the guides out because we don't need them anymore. Um, and then I made some like general uh, uh, selections in the alpha channel so that we can just like grab all of Dread grab all of the buildings, grab all the background, like whatever we need to do. So um, the first thing I'd like to point out, so I don't know if you guys remember this because we did this, what, like three streams ago, two streams ago. Um, we have this alpha channel of the line art that we had scanned, but the line art that we had scanned had like all this tooth to it because it was like that newsprinty kind of paper. And this is the stuff that we had threshold to make the line art. But, but... What if we use this as the line art instead? What if we went into our layers palette, made a new layer, filled it with black. Um, <laughs> uh, 60, 60, 40. So fill it with black and then add a layer mask to it. Paste in our, our toothy, toothy layer mask and invert it and we end up with this like toothy toothy line art 
which is actually like kind of cool i like like i look at this and i'm like we're pretty much done <laughs> but but and this is actually like kind of close to like where um the cover actually landed when it hit print in like the 80s um those line those spaces were supposed to be line breaks yeah <laughs> hey boyx we're, we're working on the law so we might do this we might do like a toothy like noisy uh dread at the end we're gonna see how that goes but for now let's do like the slick photoshopped uh thing so okay what do we what do we want to accomplish first of all i feel like we gotta we gotta change the the sky color because the sky color is going to clash with this helmet and we don't want that so let's make it night now the buildings are are pointing the buildings are like supposed to be gigantic like they're they're entire cities within these skyscrapers so i think that we need to um create atmospheric perspective i think this is going to be like the toughest part of this this stream like i think we're gonna breeze through coloring dread and then we're going to like basically agonize over like this little area right here and i i accidentally clicked let's, let's back that up um yeah i think we're gonna like agonize over that so um let's knock back some of these well let's let's make sure this guy's all taken care of before we start pushing stuff to match the sky color um yeah so let's let's figure that out um we're gonna put some like clouds and stuff up there not anything like crazy but just like add a little texture i mean we're doing we're doing real rough right here um we're going real real rough Just trying to like add a little texture and then maybe wash it again. Uh, and we can use like if like we haven't settled on a color scheme at all. So um, we can use like kind of the slider and see like what kind of a nice like night sky we can get. Like this doesn't look too bad. We're going to run into problems though with like clashing with dread suit. Unless we wash dread in some kind of color. Um, obviously, we can't do something like this. This is like nuts. <laughs> um, but we can do like a little purpley kind of thing. Like here-ish. Um, let's add some like, like little star splatter. Um, oh, the, the doggo is awake. Um, oh, we're 30%. That's why it's not showing up. All right. Uh, maybe add like a little, see, we don't want to do too many stars because it's like a highly populated city and there's probably like, you probably can't see any stars from like the light pollution. Like this looks weird, right? It looks, it looks weird. Um, so like let's like knock back the stars by like doing like a darker color yeah and i mean even though we're using like a darker color here uh, and we're doing the same amount of splatter it like i don't know like i like this kind of stuff because even though it's not it's not reality based like putting this like dark blue star kind of thing star map in here um it looks cool and that's all we got to worry about <laughs> i feel like uh so we were doing over the weekend we were doing some curse of the iron chef stuff where we were scripting and uh i thought we were gonna get get through all the scripting um put a bunch of stars in as a political statement against light pollution done um but i thought we were gonna get through the scripting on uh the comic that we're making on the weekends and uh I've slowly rolled around to the idea of like, oh my God, this comic's going to take forever. 
That doesn't mean we're not going to do it. We're going to do it. But, like, I feel like I'm locked in. Like, I was, like, trying to pace it out in my mind. Um, and if we do, like, one more, uh, like, one more stream for scripting, right? And then we do, hello, computer. You're all good? You're all good, right? We're still computers. We're still computers. Are we computers? Oh my god. Are we going to get the second crash on, on this stream right now? What is... What are you doing? You can't handle this brush at this, like, magnification for some reason. Oh my god. Oh my god, is everything on fire? Rip, is the stream down? Am I back? Computer can't handle dread. Is the stream down? It's giving me a uh, encoder overload. It's frozen. It's up. It's up. You can hear me. I'm I'm waving to you. <laughs> Sound coming through. You may be behind. Uh, I think I think we're still live. It says that it's still it's still broadcasting now. Um, it said encoder overload, which was weird. I've never gotten that before. Uh, you think it's back? Oh my god. Computer, please. Yours is good. Man. Matt Garvey's here. So, hopefully, uh, the stream won't crash. Nobody panic. Matt Garvey's here. <laughs> um, I, I think it's kind of funny that, like, the stream, like, OBS almost took down. It means that my CPU is maxed out. Yeah, I think what happened was, like, OBS almost took down everything. <laughs> Oh my god. Anyway, all right. Let's uh let's make this text pop out because it's important text probably. Maybe I should have scanned dread at a lower resolution. Uh I don't know. We're going to be fixing all these problems. I'm actually uh I just got the check for um Rick and Morty presents in the mail. So, uh, I think I'm going to buy a new computer with that. I'm like way overdue. So I'm switching to PC. Uh, and I think, <laughs> I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be good. Less of the cheek. <laughs> uh, all right. That text is important. Probably. This text is important probably too. So we're going to. So, like, these buildings aren't that important. So, like, I really pushed them back. Like, you barely even notice them. Um, they also, like, the one-point perspective kind of bends when you when you start to include that other stuff. Like, it, it starts to fall apart. So, we're just going to push it back. New computer or beer. Yeah, well, it could go either way. Um, so, all right. Let's uh let's go back. Let's select uh the night sky. And we want to we want to keep the focus like here. Like this is this right here in the middle is like where the where the focus wants to be. Um so let's add like a little bit of light behind Dread's head. Oh, we're on the we're on the black layer. Payday is a good day. Yeah. How is everyone's boing? 
please. That is intense dread cannon that you're that you're messing around with. Uh All right. All right. Are we happy with these windows? We could make them lighter and then darker as the uh, as the buildings go up. So, because it's night and you want to like a trick for knowing how to like push things forward or push them into the background or pull them forward is that like if it's night, you basically want to if you want to push it into the background, you want to get it as close to the ambient like sky color as possible. Um, I get, yeah, I get a payday when I get paid. <laughs> it's not like, oh, I'm going to be paid on Friday, like every Friday. No, it's not like that. It's like when the check comes, that's payday. I used to do a thing where, so like, uh, this is how I ended up weighing about 30 pounds heavier than I, than I weigh now. I used to do a thing when I lived in Philadelphia where I would get paid and then I would, and this was before there was like mobile checking. Um, I would then take, take my money and uh, hop on the subway, go down to the bank of America, get a uh, cash, the check. And then I would go to um, GameStop and I would like rummage through their PS2 games um where where I rolled in it all? No. <laughs> so I'd rummage through their PS2 games, um pick up like the, and they were this was at the time where like the PS2 was kind of like falling out of favor, you know, like it was like on its way out. So I'd get like five games for like $15, you know? Like it was it was ridiculous. More games than I could ever play. And uh and I would, I would, on the way home, I'd pick up McDonald's and then I'd be like, I got a payday. I got video games. I got McDonald's and, and this is great. But the problem is, is that like, um, PS2 games are full of calories. Yes. Uh, that's something they don't put on the box, which I think is like, you know, they're really overlooking something here. Um, <laughs> you were scared this would be a drugstore and it's games. So kinda. Yeah. I mean, it is kind of so i realized that like maybe this was a bad habit about like a year in because like i don't get like a payday like friday's a payday i get a payday like oh i got a check twice this week i got a check i got like a 200 hundred dollar check then i got a you know like a whatever check it's like you know i was getting like you know for like little projects if you count those and like, I got to run those to the bank. I was getting like six or seven, eight checks a month. Like it's, it got out of control. And then I was just like coming home with like, you know, 20 PS2 games a month. And it was, it was like, I guess that's like an okay way to live. But like when you factor in the McDonald's, it was like, Oh man, we got, we got a problem. <laughs> All right, so we want to we want to push these guys way back. So we want to darken them up, up top, so that they're lighter on the bottom. And then we're going to uh, use a layer mask. Old games and fast food, the freelance high life. It really was. I mean, it was like I don't know. It was. Uh, I think I could describe it as like. I was doing everything that I wanted to do at all times to the point where it was like not healthy, <laughs> you know, like it was like, you know, the robot from Futurama that's like a uh, hedonism bot. Like that's, that's how I felt. <laughs> uh, it wasn't, it wasn't a good, like long-term lifestyle. <laughs> Yeah, you're like, okay, got paid, pay bills, little ninja, new clothes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the responsible thing to do. Um, I was also uh, shirking responsibilities of bills and stuff, too. It was, it was a bad lifestyle. I was in a bad way. I didn't realize it. All right, let's do some of these explosions. 
these guys are going to be um, pretty easy because um, a lot of the work is done for us by uh, decent uh, line rendering. Hedonism, Nick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then, and then I, I met my now fiance and she was like, you got to stop this. And I was like, you're absolutely right. Like I didn't even fight her on it. I did not even fight. I was like, yeah, you're right. I should stop this. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually a little annoyed. Nobody said anything sooner. <laughs> uh so, all right, we want to do, when we're working on explosions, the way you want to work on them is think about it like each explosion has like a, a core to it. This is, that's how I do it. So like, we're going to do, we're not going to touch the stuff on the outside. We're just going to like take a toothy brush and kind of like paint lighter stuff on the inside. Um, towards the core you want to like roll with the shape that the artists put down so like here's a here's an excellent one so like these guys are a little abstracted because they're like off in the distance and tiny so you can just kind of be like oh you know like we're done we're done we're done we're done you know like no big deal but like this one's a little bit bigger so i can walk you through that um yeah when she tells you and you don't fight it yeah 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 I was like, oh, yeah, you, you actually, like, care about me. So, yeah, I'm going to listen to you. <laughs> um, she did the same thing with, with caffeine. She was like, you're going to have a heart attack. And I was like, I know. <laughs> it's I'm in a bad way. <laughs> you just look up explosions for reference. So, like, okay. I, I was starting to talk about explosions and then and then I stopped. But uh, we're just kind of like thinking about it like, okay, you have like a center hot explosion and we're gonna we're gonna get um, uh, higher and higher with like whiter and whiter uh, marks in there. Um, but for now, we're just kind of like, okay, the the orange here is like a darker value. So we're going to put that on the like outside near where like Brian did these kind of like mushroomy kind of things. These like lumps. You want to roll with the lumps. That's what I'm saying. We're all made. We're all like meat cylinders. Um, we, we're lumpy meat cylinders. And then we also uh, create lumpy meat cylinders. And you want to keep that in mind whenever you're creating anything, whether it's comics or crochet or anything. Uh, if you're writing something, just keep in mind that we're all meat cylinders. This is all pro advice, by the way. You can take this to the bank. This this will get you get you marble work. Um, meat cylinders. Write it down. Uh, all right. So, like, you just kind of want to like roll with like what he's got down here. So, like, we have like a darker thing here near the lines to lighter and then behind it is like lighter and darker. So you're kind of creating like these, these, I don't know, like you're creating lumpy, lumpy stuff. <laughs> this is a weird, this took a turn. <laughs> I don't know if this is the best way to describe this. <laughs> oh my God. None of this, none of this stream is usable. None of this is making it to YouTube. Uh, all right, so yeah, we're we're kind of like, like we we have a lot of real estate in here, and we're gonna kind of like make these. We're gonna try to echo what Brian was doing in the line art, um, with these kind of like lumpy shapes. Um, and then when we get out here, uh, roll with what the marks that he's he's laying down. Um, computer, computer. All right, all right. We're having a rough day, me and the computer. <laughs> Give me a meat cylinders comic, not safe for work. <laughs> Lovely Judge Dread lumps. Yeah, 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 yeah. These are all things. These are all things. Um, all right.
All right, so we used we used like a lighter shade of yellow, but we're gonna we're gonna actually take it a step further, um, and we're just gonna like constantly refine. So now we have like a whiter shade, and we could even actually go whiter than that. So we use like a white shade for like the center, and we don't have to like do too much for like the outside. Like now we're just kind of like focused on the center, so that it kind of like radiates out starts in the middle radiates out it, you want it like as close to white as possible in the center of the explosion and kind of like do what Brian did with these like kind of lumps um, this is kind of how I handle all explosions rendering them it creates like um, explosions lightsabers uh, laser blasts um, if you give it like a white core it'll register as like really hot in somebody's brain whoever's looking at it I guess the pr or, or maybe just a random person's brain they'll think about it but like you want to leave you see I'm like I'm leaving like chunks in here too like it doesn't have to be perfect it's an explosion <laughs> Oh my god, your human hunting gear? Oh my god. Boix is gearing up to um to judge a few people in Mega City One. Uh so I started uh reading some Darkest Dungeon. Uh I got some other stuff that I put on the two read pile. Um if you guys wanna hear about it on on my YouTube uh we're gonna be we're gonna be i'm gonna be putting a video out tomorrow of like all the other stuff i'm reading um because like i don't want to just uh sit here and uh toot my own horn no one wants to see a stream like that i want to like talk about you know other stuff that i've been reading and i want like uh if you guys are reading some cool stuff you should probably put it in the put it in the discord put it in the chat let me know holla at your boy how, what? Why did I say that? I, you know, I stream and there's no filter. I've never said that before in my life. <laughs> Overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. <laughs> Delicious dungeon, not darkest dungeon. Right, right, right. But I'm playing darkest dungeon, but I'm reading Delicious Dungeon. <laughs> so things. Things are going awry in my brain. I'm getting them crossed. But I, so we talked about this a little bit on, on, I was on Boyk's stream yesterday about how I haven't found Darkest Dungeon to be very good. Um, we can talk about Darkest Dungeon. I want to talk about dark, Darkest Dungeon. Um, so I started playing last night and I think that the hurdle that I had with Darkest Dungeon is like, the menus are really tough to like navigate on the switch. Um, I just, I couldn't, I was like constantly frustrated. Like how do I just equip items? Like I just want to equip items. I have like 40 items and there's not that like, I don't know the right combination of buttons to get the item on a guy. And like, uh, I was getting like increasingly frustrated, you know? Um, and it is. It's a lot of management. That's basically the core of the game is management. But, like, if the management is frustrating... We're using pure white now, by the way, on these explosions. Um, we're just kind of, like, touching up the course. Uh, that, like... If the actual management is frustrating in the menus... Like, if the UI is frustrating and the game is about management, then we're in for a bad time. Like, it's, it's going to be rough. So, but I think that I'm like trying to persevere and like get to a point where, uh, I'm not totally frustrated all the time. Um, and I, I think that I'm starting to get to a point where I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm actually enjoying the game a little bit more now. Um, I kind of started like pairing up. Uh, decent people who work together rather than just throwing a bunch of idiots into the dungeon um, 
you know, like using marked tactics and stun and plague together and stuff like that. Um, my fun. Yes. Uh, so we're, we're just kind of like noodling on the building right now. Um, adding, adding detail in, uh, these like glares on the windows. Uh, this stuff is like, you know, it's whatever it's, it's not, uh, rocket science. Like, it's done when it looks done kind of thing. Uh, we want to keep it not too intense. We want to keep it kind of light. Um, it's kind of weird because it's like there's the shadow. I, maybe it's this building's shadow on this building, but like I don't know that we can really communicate it that well with color. Um, we're kind of doing like a very limited color scheme for the background uh but yeah i so i don't know i started like enjoying darkest dungeon a little bit more so i i if i was hating on it before uh i'm like starting to take it back but man it is like it's like uh not as bad as but like old monster hunter games where it's like oh my god like i just can't there's like an onslaught of information and uh i i can't get into this like there's a hurdle that you got to get over before you start to have fun which is like always a really fun thing for a video game <laughs> yeah i don't, i don't know about that stuff um so i'm kind of like I don't know, t like noodling on the windows back here. Whoa, hello. This stuff, uh, we can keep like relatively simple. Um, as it goes back, it's gonna lose detail. So we actually don't wanna continue more further than that um, because we're just gonna get in the way of ourselves. Uh, what we should do is maybe take this yellow so like Brian put like a kind of halo effect around dread. Um, I usually hate this stuff in comics. Uh, I kind of hate it right now. No offense. 1980s, Brian Bolin. Um, but, uh, I can see why you did it. Um, I just, you know, I usually, when I get stuff like this, maybe this is presumptuous of me, but, I usually just extend the line art and get rid of the halo. Um, I'm usually like, this artist doesn't know what they want, and I'm going to make the choice for them. <laughs> Which, uh, if you're watching this, artists that I worked with, uh, I promise I didn't do that on your haloed stuff, just other artists. Yeah, don't worry about it. You seem worried about it. So let's uh, kind of do this, I guess. Like, the thing is, is like, it starts to, like, you don't need it down here, but you need it up here. And then it's like, well, do I trace it around this, like, window? Like, who cares? You know, like, I don't, I don't know. But then it's like, also, he's screaming. Like, okay, okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing that, that, like, bugs me with line artists. When they do stuff like this, like... What do I do with this? Cause like he's he's yelling and it's like over the line art. Like he's drew the yelling. He drew the yelling. <laughs> Which I get like adds a lot of energy to like the, the piece, but like the yelling is taking up physical space here. It's like covering up the laser blast. So I mean maybe we just maybe we just laser laser blast through the yelling and then just knock out the line art for the yelling. Oh my god, the yelling. Um, Dread seems like he yells a lot, by the way. <laughs> I don't know what this stream is. <laughs> None of this is usable. <laughs> anyway. Uh, we're going we're gonna to halo some of this stuff on this side now, I guess. Uh... Yeah, we're set to normal. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, uh, I want to highlight Brian's name down there. Um, we've been talking about, uh, that's how powerful Dredd's voice is. It distorts reality. Yeah. Add, just add deformation around his head. Yeah, we could try that. Um, I usually hate doing um, a lot of like special effects in uh, like like blur and stuff like that, but I've been like warming up to it a little bit uh, in comics lately. Um, I think that when I started trying to do that, um, by the way, if you are if you are an aspiring colorist and you're like, I'm gonna add blur everywhere, like you're probably doing it wrong. Um, you you want to like approach that stuff with a very 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 light hand and i think that learning how to do it with um uh masks is like masks and duplicate layers is where you want to be we can we can mess with that a little bit at the end here i mean maybe we just color it i don't know guys I, you know uh what are we what are we doing don't look at me don't look at this this doesn't count we're experimenting. That's what this is. Cause like as much as I as much as I like want to roll with like what's going on down here, like Man, maybe we should change the yellow. Cause like okay, what do you guys think? Like I don't want to do the yellow around the whole figure. Cause like you don't need it up here. But at the same time, there's like he just stopped drawing this guy's pants, you know? So it's like, shit, man, I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe we just, like, do it in a different color. Um, maybe we'll do it in a different color. We're trying stuff out. We're experimenting. We're on the fly right now. Um, for some reason, that isn't selected, but that's fine. Maybe we'll do, like, a darker color. Um, maybe match the background. Yeah, Dredd's outfit isn't enough. He's not, uh, flamboyant or wild enough in this, in his current form. Um, oh man, we like, we got chunks in here that we just like did not deal with. Yeah, I, you know, that's the thing about Judge Dredd is like, he really blends into a crowd. <laughs> With his gold eagle shoulder pads. <laughs> I think that looks good. I think that using a darker color, maybe where like we want to be, um, maybe get rid of this weirdness here. We probably don't even need it here. Like we can, we can cheat it. Well, let's cheat. Oh my God. My, my mouse skills on full display. Okay. All right. We're getting there. We're getting there. Let's, uh, let's call her Dread. So, like we said in chat, we want Dread to stand out. Um, how do we go about doing that? We're going to end up washing Dread with color. Dread is actually, uh, pretty close to local Joe. Um, Important image added to the Discord. <laughs> oh man, this is this is not inaccurate. Let me tell you that. <laughs> this is how I lived my life for a long time, <laughs> too long. Odin Sphere is a great game. This is a good choice, by the way. Uh, I love me some Odin Sphere. I played it on the Vita though. Um. <laughs> all right so how are we gonna what we don't want to do is do dread in any kind of blues because the blues are going to wash out the golds that he has in his armor the blues are going to blend him into the background and we want him to come forward. We want him to be the bit like the biggest thing on this, on the page. Like he's the draw. So we can go on the opposite end of the color spectrum 
and just do an orange. We can start with start there and see how it works. Um, here's like 30% of this orange color right here. Uh, and kind of like tune it up. Do like 52. Um. <laughs> Appreciate the effort. So like this is where we're going to start with. This is like just like a wash 52 of, of that orange. Um, obviously like we can't really stay with this. Um, man, we're like really blending into everything. Uh, there we go. Problem solving. All right. So like, let's take the gold out of, out of his, uh, costume and kind of like warm it up. Uh, make it that pure orange and we're gonna it's like um, you like that orange yeah 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 we're working it um, that's a uh, Connor in the chat by the way he's he does a lot of comic work uh, on his channel you guys should give him a follow he's like streams almost every day um, C N R H U S Connor Connor house <laughs> um, I think uh, uh, we have, let's, I mean, we got to keep Dread's iconic red. Um, skin tone's looking a little funky. Now it's looking really funky. That was not the direction to go. Um, man, it's like ashen. I got to think about this for a second. Maybe we should just go back. That's not even going back. I think maybe the teeth are throwing it off. Do the teeth in like yellow. <laughs> you didn't see me pick the orange? I just picked too quick, man. Uh yeah, I just got I got the color pickers over here. And I just like grabbed it. Um, yeah, it's it, it was looking zombie dread for a little while there. Um, still kind of zombie dread. I kind of like him being like red in the face. Like, like he's just like so angry. <laughs> um, we're going to darken up his suit. trying to figure out so because it suits like a like a, a it's supposed to be like black but um it's gonna pick up a little bit of the orange so maybe it's like gonna look a little purplish i mean we can probably stick with that um this is like the metal here's the thing so right now we're kind of at the root of like where a lot of my problems with buildings come in where like we started with like a very gray uh, gray for the for his zipper and for his gun like gunmetal gray and we washed it in orange and now it is this terrible color <laughs> this like pukey beige thing but like I, I can I can hear you at home being like but Nick we're we're it's gunmetal gray we're washing it with orange it's it's not local color this is what we want to be doing right no fuck no this color is terrible like we got to change this and maybe we just gotta like make it not what it should be like maybe we just gotta like like crib that put it away um that i wash it before i render yeah well i need to because i gotta like figure out what we're doing so like i feel like this we're getting close Maybe the teeth are too white now. Yeah, I think we're real close now. So we're going to render. Um, let's render everything. Yeah, I feel like we're, we, we've gotten, we've worked dread to a point where uh, this is still kind of looking weird. Uh, I mean, maybe we just go darker. There we go. Whew. 
thirty percent orange. Like, freaking fixed it. You know, I don't know. Like, uh, dread. Help. I don't know if this is necessarily where we're settling on the on the final colors, the washes here, but like this is where we're gonna we're gonna render and then figure out like figure out the rest of this. This is in the city. This is not yeah, we're back in Mega City One, baby. Um So like when I was thinking about doing this, I was like, oh, we could do in my mind, the line art was a little more open. Brian had put down less shadow and I was like, oh, we could do like police lights around him, like red and blue and like pop them out that way. But in order to do that, we kind of need like a dominating light source and like a secondary light source. And Brian just didn't draw that like the the art for like all intents and purposes, like Brian put a very strong light source in here. So we're just going to kind of like roll with these colors. Remind you of the Pearl Jam skull pilot. Uh, you're like, you're like way deep in my brain from like high school watching Todd McFarlane Pearl Jam videos. Is that what you're talking about? That's 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 way deep in the brain. <laughs> I I mean I couldn't even like I don't even really totally remember what that looks like. <laughs> All right, let's let's render. So, we're just going to do like cut out the light shades um that we're going to be doing. Uh leaving the dark shades. This like angle is a little weird uh it's gonna take a little finagling i th i have a sinking suspicion that um brian's work will look best with a very light touch when it comes to the rendering but i'm still not totally sold on this skin tone and this teeth like man i don't know why dread was so so difficult in the washes usually um usually I don't have this much uh, this much of a problem with the washes, um, but you know what? That's that's what makes it. I don't know, the job fun. I guess the fact that it's hard, right? That's why we come back to this for constant, constant punishment. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so yeah all right let's uh let's zoom in like get this before we get into like the chain because this is going to be a lot of like small marks let's um do the stuff around it um because like if we do this little chain if we render this little chain uh I'm going to have to be really careful rendering around it. Um, <laughs> thought you were one of those guys that doesn't wage war. I don't know what is happening in the chat. Um, oh, oh, you mean like two kinds of artists, like the artist who wages war against the piece that he's working on versus the artist that uh, enjoys it as they do it. Like, they see like every everything is a battle and one artist like is just having fun the whole time. I mean, I mostly just have fun the whole time. If you if you watch this stream at all, you notice like I'm like joking around like most of the time. Um, that was just like a mo I, I think I had a brief lapse of like, why isn't this working? Like, please just work. Um, Uh, if you're ever afraid of endless lassos because you're afraid it's going to get lost, you can just be like, oh, there's the lasso. Oh, my God. We have all these little little texture things and then just save. OK, now it's saved. We can just back up. <laughs> um, 
We got all these little guys. I don't know what those are what those are doing. Make sure we don't have them up here either. So yeah, you just dump your selection into an alpha channel um, and then save it and then back it up and then keep doing your selection. So like now like half of our selection is saved. I, I do that with a lot of the realm pages. Um, the reason for it is like the uh, Jeremy gives me um, 600 DPI full scans, like uh, 11 by 17. Um, so they're pretty big files. Like when all is said and done, uh, the flattened file is like 116 to 180 megs. Um, so there's a very real possibility of my computer crashing, like just randomly while I'm working on it. So if I have like a big selection, like with the lasso, I will periodically just like dump it into a alpha channel and save. Um, if you're doing any kind of like big selection like that, like I do it constantly on stream um, or in my work as well. Uh, you're going to want to like save it eventually or save it periodically, especially if you get up. Oh my God. Every time I get up, I, I dump it into an alpha channel because like, you know, I live in Florida and uh, yeah, sometimes it really depends. Um, Nick's ability to see past the marching ants uh, impresses you uh, constantly hiding to see the way they look. I mean, you just do this enough and you're like eventually being like, yeah, I, I know what this is going to look like. Um, plus I feel like, you know, this isn't the final step. We're not going to do like, uh, you know, a cut in the line art and then we're done. Like we're going to, we're going to go in and like refine it. So it doesn't have to be totally, totally perfect. It can just, it can be like, it can be good enough, you know? Um, yeah. Most of the coloring that I do is any of the coloring that I do is like 300 DPI or higher. Um, mostly like the thing is, is like every company has a different, um, every company has got like a different standard. Um, so like sometimes I get 300 DPI, sometimes I get six. One time I got 1200, which was like bananas. And I think a mistake, <laughs> like I, you know, it, and it also depends on like what they want to use it for. If like, you know, Jeremy wants to make 11 by 17 prints of like realm covers down the road. Like he has that option, um, because I'm coloring them at that size, uh, image made a poster of like um bitmapped but i mean like it's still gonna be it's still gonna be 120 uh i mean i've gotten 120 grayscale before but i'm pretty sure that's a mistake you don't need to make it that big in grayscale um yeah i i mean like basically if there's any format that like you can possibly receive a page at i have received that page over the course of many years of doing this um But yeah, so it's like, it's also about like what, you know, we're going to be doing with this thing. Like we did, uh, Jeremy went specifically went bigger on the first cover for the realm. Um, and because like image wanted to make a poster of it and like give it away at shows at their, at their booth. So it's like, you know, we went specifically bigger for that. By and large, your like interior pages should be 300 to 600 DPI at size for the colorist. Like, meaning not 11 by 17. They should be like whatever the size is, like six by eight and change or whatever. Um, I mean, fake McCoy. You can see the jaggedness of the of the uh, line art at 450 and less, but it's not going to print that way. Like, who cares what who cares what I see? I see all the faults. Like, I know all I got all the mistakes. I got all the dirt. But like, you know, when when the reader sees it, it's going to print fine. Um, plus, like, I feel like when you when you do 300 DPI. Um, we're, we're like this stream turned into like it went from 
I'm joking around about my hedonism to like let's t- let's get into the technical nuts and bolts of of files. <laughs> this <laughs> stream like took a turn. No, you're saying that it prints that way. I don't know, man. I I've gotten a lot of like 300 DPI stuff that like has I feel like has printed fine, but I mean maybe it hasn't. I uh, maybe maybe I'm just unconsciously thinking like 300 DPI stuff from like early in my career and, and like it went over to. I mean it's it's fine, Connor. I don't mind. You don't. It's not a derail. Uh, like we could talk about all this stuff. I don't mind. Um. Maybe I'm thinking of like 300 DPI stuff like early in my career that like people just didn't realize. And now uh, it's just been 600 for so long and I just don't even realize it. Like, cause I know. To tell you the truth, like unless I zoom in and like it's a mess and I realize that like they've saved the JPEG size as like a TIFF, um, then like I usually don't even bother like you know uh checking the size like i assume that like whatever production at dc or like jeremy has a plan and i'm just gonna color it like that's nine times out of ten like that's kind of how i treat it like from meat cylinders to file formats (laughs) yeah uh like nine times out of ten i'm just like they're like here's the files and i'm like unless there's something glaringly wrong i'm like all right (laughs) Um, when we start to work on, uh, curse of the iron chef stuff on the weekends, uh, which by the way, I was, I was talking about that earlier. Uh, I was talking about my fears with it. Um, it's going to be, um, probably, uh, 600 DPI at size. We're going to be drawing it. Although maybe we should draw it not at size. Maybe we should shrink it. I don't know what we're going to be doing. I'm going to be doing it on the computer. So like I've never worked digital before. Um, so it's going to be a learning experience. I don't know that people that work digital, if they work 600 DPI or 300 DPI um, or at size or at 11 by 17. I don't know. Connor <laughs> curse of the iron chef is a great title. Hey man, I can't attribute that to me. That was, that was the chat. Um, they actually, in the first, in the first, uh, series, we were like hashing out, like what we want to be doing on stream, you know? Um, and the chat threw out like six great titles for this thing. Um, get a digital anchor in stream to talk to me. Yeah. I, we gotta, I, I'm going to be starting to like branch out, um, We've talked to who have we talked to. We've talked to Jeremy Hahn on stream. We've talked to Melissa Louise, uh, another colorist, um, and we've talked to Charlie Chu about pitching comics. Um, we're gonna do um, more uh, guests in the future. By the way, I'm very excited about it. And man, Jeremy and I talked for two hours. By the way, did you all? aspiring artists did you all purchase a building in your hometown like jeremy said you should i mean i don't know if jeremy said he, i i don't want to mischaracterize him he didn't say you should but like i've been thinking about buying land ever since that conversation i'm like the way to be a successful artist buy land <laughs> for those who, who are not in the loop jeremy had bought a building and is uh set to make a profit off it and then once the building is paid off we'll continue to make a profit on it which will give him uh freedom as an artist um but is not necessarily the reason why he bought it i i don't know it's it's a it's a wild case but i he's he's putting his money where his mouth is in his hometown i think that's great uh i kind of can't wait to do that here eventually but um you have a mailbox in your hometown does that count yeah that counts that counts you're invested (laughs) um i'm gonna catch up on the chat for a second depends a lot on the artist how thick or thin the line art is i think marvel standard is 450 and look at the last three or four years of steve dylan's work uh ruined by threshold art artwork and not dpi not enough dpi yeah i don't know about that stuff i don't know what i haven't seen um we would have to get Steve Dillon's artwork and like 
put it under the microscope. Um, yeah, it might depend on like the artists that I'm working with. Like Oming's got a very like thick line. So maybe his uh, art at 300 DPI is like not as like afflicted as, um, you know, someone like Steve Dillon. Yeah, I don't know. Um, that's how McDonald's did it. The way to be a successful restaurant on the land. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, I I have, like, some hopes and dreams for and aspirations for, like, um, getting some, some cool comic stuff off the ground eventually. But, like, uh, you know... First, I have to line up all the other things in my life and then root down here or wherever I end up rooting down um, before, you know, I start buying land and all that. Uh, I know that uh, once Chris Sabella, and I don't know if he was joking or not, sometimes it's hard to tell. <laughs> so I don't want to pin him down on this. But like uh, Chris Sabella writes uh, Heartthrob, which is a book that I work on with uh, Robert Wilson the Fourth. Um he wrote or he told me that he was like he's i think he's living in portland right now and um he was like uh so upset with like how expensive portland rent is um and he was like you know he was like i'm gonna move to like kentucky i don't even know if it was kentucky or not but like somewhere in the south like a little a little place uh with like low with a uh, cheap land and he was like i'm just gonna move there and i'm gonna get like a mcmansion and then like uh anybody who is an inspiring comics uh person can like live in the house uh rent free as long as they like do x amount of pages uh of like a project that we work on per month you know so if it's like, oh, you know, you're working on a book with Chris, we're going to do a monthly 22 page thing. You do 22 pages a month for six issues. Uh, we're going to you got your rent comped like that kind of thing. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you make it a lot of sense. But I don't know if he was like messing with me or inviting me or messing with me. I don't know. Chris puts out a crazy amount of work. Yeah, man. Writers, man. They write. <laughs> uh, part of the reason why I feel like so if you're if you have your uh, finger on the pulse of the comic community. Um, uh, another good thing about owning property is you have a backup if the comics industry implodes. Don't jinx it. So. uh if you have your finger on the pulse of the comic book community, you know that like currently there's a little pushback to like um, writers kind of like getting first and foremost credit or nearly all the credit in like a fan's eyes. It's one thing about owning once you own like you're alone. It's all on you. Shit goes wrong. There's no one there to be like, oh, we can fix it. Yeah. I mean, that is you got to like you know, squirrel away some money for, for that kind of problem. Um, but yeah, so, but the thing about like, the reason that I think people talk about, um, writers, especially within the business is that not because they're valuing writers over everyone else, but because like in, like in the case of Chris putting out a crazy amount of work, he's like, you know, the readership is interested in the writing more than the coloring and you can promote Robert's work, but Robert can only work on one thing. He can only work on heartthrob. He can only work on one thing at a time, but you can potentially as a publisher be like, Oh, this is Chris Sabella's work. Like he does all these other stuff. Like, you know, you can link it all together in a way where you're like chaining books together where you're associating his work with other work that's been successful. Um, whereas with like Robert, it's like, well, Robert's only done this. He's only working on this thing. Like follow his work. It's this thing. It's this one thing right now. 
and and then like colorists it's like we really don't have the ear of the industry um so even though like i work on a lot of stuff no one really cares <laughs> so it's like i i i think the industry started leaning towards writers um away from artists just as a way to promote and then the fans kind of reacted because of that you know like the f like they saw importance placed on the writer um writers can be everywhere they also set the stage they got control over the bones yeah but like i don't think that you know i think that a good artist can like make or break a book too whoa that was wrong you know like you give the same script to seven different artists and you'll get seven different interpretations of the same script. Like people don't realize how many um, choices are being made by the artist. Uh, like the artist in, in a sense being the writer. Like we're going to get into all that stuff when we start like thumbnailing out pages for curse of the iron chef. Um, all right. So I just multiplied like a dark, like maroon over this whole thing uh we're not gonna leave it there but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna work it from here um try to figure out this teeth situation i mean maybe that's where we want to be like closer to white like we're ebbing into let's save it before i do anything we're ebbing into like kind of where we were before but kind of not like you'd be forgiven if you thought oh all i've done is like change the suit color um wow that actually looks nice you sound shocked you sound shocked <laughs> um but like here so you can see like how much change we've made over dread like this is kind of where we started with the flats so the flats look very, very basic. Dread looks very, very different. And we're getting, we're actually also, because we've, we've started, um, uh, we're working dread and like this kind of orange. We're doing the city in kind of a blue. We're getting an opposite end of the color. We're getting a, what is it called? Complementary colors. We're getting complementary colors for the, for the color scheme. Um, uh, more stories nowadays tend to be larger, involve many threads. Stories used to be much more isolated. That's true. Yeah. So maybe like the writers are doing better work, but artists are doing better work now than they ever has before too. So it's like, I don't know. We should write like a two pager and do an artist jam, see all the different stuff we should get. We could get. Yeah. I would love to do that, but like trying to find doing a colorist jam is one thing. I feel like doing an artist jam is like asking a lot from someone. To do a two pager and to do it well, an artist needs like three or four days. Like to do a colorist jam, like we were doing before with uh, Marissa, you only need like a couple hours of of a colorist's time. So like you get colorists will like volunteer time a lot uh, easier, a lot more easily. What easier easy? we got there it's let's it's fine um all right so we're gonna we're gonna darken up these guys because and then we're gonna lighten them up i know that doesn't make any sense but it'll make sense when we start to like a, like approach it i'm just throwing like a little bit of grad through it um we're kind of creating a light source by throwing the gradient through it uh we're gonna do the same thing down here take this same color screen e easily yeah exactly nailed it um i actually i wonder if we could throw like a blue through there yeah that looks kind of that looks kind of better um so okay so you know how i was like you're like you're seeing through the through the jaggies i'm really not like look at this selection this selection is a mess <laughs> Uh, the explosions could be the light source. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. 
I'm, I'm kind of treating this like two different pieces. Like there's dread and then there's the rest of it. And you know, like here's the thing we could do like a light source here, but like Brian put like a, like a dark shadow, like the light is hitting it this way. So it's kind of like, I don't know. At a certain point, like we could pick it apart and like really dig into like getting a perfect light source. But the reality is, is that like at the end of the day, digging in and getting a perfect light source might add an hour, hour and a half to our time um, of figuring out all these explosions and, and crafting it per, per like perfectly. Um, and it might not actually yield a better result. If that makes any sense. Um, because like, even if it's a perfectly crafted light source, I mean, I don't know. It's like so much other stuff can go wrong. I just, uh, I, pr I much prefer flying by the seat of my pants and like, you know, uh, uh, kind of like rolling with my gut instincts than like trying to like perfectly craft it. If that makes any sense at all. Like at a certain point you have to look at, you have to look at your workflow and like what you got going on and be like, okay, time versus impact, you know, like, yes, we can, we can go through and pick, pick everything apart or we can save an hour and a half and like do something else, like create actual work. Um, not that this is an actual work, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I have X amount of things to get through the day. I can do, I can create perfect light sources on this and do nothing else today. Or I can do this. We can joke around about McDonald's. I can, I can work on my covers that I need to get done. Like, yeah. Understanding when to ignore it. Yeah, exactly. Um, like the thing is, is that this dread cover, like, You have to kind of think about it like, okay, so like this dread cover, what's the most important thing? Like the most important thing for this dread cover is that judge dread stands out. That's it. Like that is, that is going to like make or break this cover. Like we want this to pop. We want the logo to pop. We want this to pop. And then like, uh, the explosions to look cool and then dread to stand out so that people know like dreads back, you know, um, it's like a, I don't know. It's a weird, it's a weird, weird thing to juggle. Um, let's see, can we screen down? Yeah. Just like little highlights I'm trying to like, so, like I said, um, Brian's stuff is going to look best when, like, we don't totally mess with it. Um, I think the, the more similar it is, the better it, it's going to be, kind of. So we're, like, kind of lightening all of the skin here. Uh, we're keeping it real chill. Keeping it so chill. Um, and then like, we're going to pop highlights on the chin cause it's dread. Uh, and then like the nose. Uh, I don't want to mess with the helmet too much cause like I want to keep it pretty iconic, but we can put like a little bounce light in there. Um, all right. So the most important thing about this cover is to look at it and instantly know who is and who isn't the That's what you need to know. <laughs> uh.
<laughs> That's never going to get old for me. It's never going to get old. Um, so his gloves and stuff are like green, but what if they weren't? What this book presupposes is what if they weren't? Um, like, can we put, wash it into a different place? I mean, maybe we wash it into green. Um, <laughs> It really never gets old. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm kind of bouncing around all over the place, and I apologize for that. I'm like, we're going to do all the all the gold stuff. And then I was like, let's abandon all the gold stuff. <laughs> you love it every time. Uh, it's so dumb. All right, I'm, I'm done doing little minute touches that don't mean anything. Okay, okay. So, I mean, I did a long rant on, like, why we're not going to be, like, really sweating light sources. However, if you are a colorist that is sweating light sources, it doesn't mean you're doing shit wrong. Like, I want, I want to make that an important point. Because, like, you know... Um, yeah, yeah, I only work in channels. Like, I basically do everything all on one layer done. Like, we're going to do some special effects stuff on uh, the layer above it, but, like, that's going to be about it. Um, so we want, like, a cool gold... Uh, we're going to grab some of the explosion white there. Yeah, like if you're if you're sweating all the all the um, light sources and everything, it just means that you're like a little bit different than the way I'm doing it, which is totally fine. Um, So let's do the same thing for the gold shoulder pad over here. And I, you know, I look at some of the people who do sweat uh, a lot of the, um, getting the exact, exact uh, light source right. And sometimes it turns out really good. And sometimes I'm like, you didn't need to do that. You know, like, uh, it's just the channels. It's brave. It's not brave. It's, it's, um, so I know I was in your, your channel before and we were like, Oh, Nick Flaherty, he just started banging rocks together. That's how he was making art. He didn't, he didn't even have computer. Like that was, that was like a running joke in your chat earlier today, but this is a product. Like, don't be fooled. This is a product of like, I was working in, um, you know, I started doing this in like 2002, 2003, and I was working on an Apple G2 or something like that. Um, and it just did not have the horsepower to do like 40 layers. Like I work this way out of like, this is the way I was trained to work and it is a necessity because like this was the only way to do it. And now you newfangled kids are all like spoiled with everything. You're like, oh, we'll just do it in 40 layers and then like adjust the light sources on the fl And I'm just like, I mean, like I can do that stuff, but like where my, where my brain lives is, is like McComaker might be older than me. Yeah. I'm 36. I mean, I don't know how old, how old McComaker is. Um, but, uh, not G6s weren't current. Um, I think four was current when you started coloring in high school. Photoshop didn't have layers yet. Yeah, we're like way back. I was also on a, a studio computer that was like one generation behind, so it wasn't. Um, 
you know, everyone in your channel is 26. Well, I'm 10 years older than everyone in your channel. <laughs> um, yeah. So like, I mean, I feel like people don't realize like the tech gap between like 2000 and now is like freaking enormous. Like I didn't get my first cell phone until I was like two years into college. And at that point it was a flip phone. I didn't get my first smartphone until like, 2007 you know um do they count down i don't i don't even i think i thought they counted up i don't know didn't they i don't know i don't know what i had but it was a not a computer that could run 40 layers let's just put it that way like the stuff that i'm able to do now just based simply on tech would like freaking crush the brain of like you know college nick flarty like college nick flarty would not know how to deal with any of this bullshit like how do you get that texture what is that brush how are you using that where did that come from like all that stuff would would just like break my brain i also but because i was like so limited in, in tools you know, I was working, I'm working straight channels, but I was also limited in, in what I can achieve. Like, uh, when I started in comics, I would do like one sing. I, I would get all my colors, right. I would do one single cut on the character and then I would call it a day. Like I wouldn't even render any of the background. I wouldn't I, like, cause I felt like at the time you didn't, I mean, you didn't really need to, I mean, maybe you did and I was just bad at things. That's also a distinct possibility. That's a distinct possibility. Um, growing up with the tech is a real advantage. Yeah. Um, <laughs> college, we were being taught on the computer is not good enough for other departments. Yeah. That's very true. Ziggy. Uh, so like, you know, I started making comics that were not very compl complicated. So like doing channels was fine. And then like, as I got more and more comfortable with what was going on with channels, like I've, I've improved upon it and improved upon it and improved upon it. Um, still using CS4 cause, uh, yeah, yeah. You're like, man, your mobile is butchering that sentence. You'd love for some of the CS6 tools. Yeah, you can still get. I mean, oh, I don't know if you, I don't know if this is true. I was going to say that you could still get um, the Kyle Webster brushes, but uh, I don't know if that's actually true or not anymore. Because um, since he's been like folded into Photoshop and is like a Photoshop uh, creator. Um, They've, they've acquired his likeness or his brushes at least. I don't know if it's, if you can uh, still, if he's still selling them on like Gumroad, but if he is, you should check that out. I don't know if uh, some are broken in CS6. Uh, oh, that's, that's obnoxious. Disappointing. Um, But I understand they want to like, you know, make the newest and best thing, the newest and best thing that you got to get. That's their business model. That's great though, that um, you were saying McComaker is older than me and he's like, he's just getting uh, kind of rolling with comics. I think that's great. Uh, you know, people approach things at all different ages and, you know, I always feel like, so I'm starting to do pages again and I'm like, I'm behind all these freaking 20 year olds are like lapping me. And, uh, I think that, um, all those 20 year olds are probably like, I'm behind all these, all these like 15 year olds with Tumblr accounts have like, like lapped me, you know, like, I think that no matter how old you are, you think you're at some capacity behind the curve of everything. 
Um, I don't know if that's necessarily true. I feel like that's true. That's not true. I got I got a lot of catching up to do. Um, and I commend anyone like you know, just getting started. Um, I mean like people change careers all the time, like within the within the like real quote unquote real world. Um, the sense of being lapped is real. Yeah. The problem is okay. You're jealous of, of kids in school with time. Yeah, that's a real thing. Um, let, me, let me catch up on chat for a second here. Um, you were telling you on stream that you still don't know where to get them. I can show you where to get the brushes right now. Um, recommended me after I finished Arcane last January or February. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kyle was already doing stuff with brushes that wouldn't work in CS6 before he linked up with Adobe. Oh. Um, Feeling of getting lapped is real. That feel all the time. Jealous of qu kids with time. Um, I wish I was a kid with time again. Yeah. So like the problem is, is that the internet connects everybody and like the good work rises to the top. So you're always going to feel like, oh, I'm behind. Look at this kid who's six years younger than me, 10 years younger than me, 15 years younger than me, 20 years younger than me. It's already doing like better work than I am. But like the reality is, is that like he's a weirdo, <laughs> like he's he's a prodigy or whatever. Like you don't have to worry about him. Like you're mostly on track. And like even if you're older and you're just getting into this, like just let that feeling like light a fire. Like let's let's, you know, like do it up. Um, all right. Like anything else with kids, they don't know. Yeah, I wish I did like fucking 10 times more drawing as a as a kid than i did okay ziggy i'm gonna show you how to get these brushes and for anyone else in chat wondering what we're talking about um so if my computer doesn't crash so like kyle webster had all these brushes that he had that he had made um i still have a lot of them here they are so they used to be tool presets in a list um the visible visible women thing has brought your ego to a new low <laughs> why even exist yeah man there's talented people out there and spoiler alert some of them are women <laughs> i know that wasn't your point but like yeah I, that visible women tag is freaking amazing um everyone should everyone should go follow the the hashtag visible women tag on twitter it is nuts some of the work that's up there is incredible um yeah uh so okay these things so these were all like you know you buy an ultimate pack and it would have all these different like things in there um you know you'd get like all these different like they were tool presets they weren't in the brushes category um and he would sell them on gumroad for like a couple of bucks or whatever and then like you'd you'd put them in here and and you'd pick them off this this list and this list is fine but it's like everything's mixed together it's like tough to find stuff but like you get these like crosshash brushes we'll see if we can computer computer please um we'll just do something something silly make sure this saved so like you get these crosshatch brushes that like do this crazy effects and it's like oh this is like really good for drawing you know like if i'm if i'm going to be drawing pages like this is an asset um, some of them more than others, like here's a Mordor. This is like a textury kind of brush. Um, so like he went from this to being folded into Photoshop and now you can click like, okay, let me get, let me get brushes. Let me get to this brush menu up here. Um, and then you go click this little cog and then you go get more brushes and then all of his brushes are up there and I, I believe that they update. I don't know. You may have to download them, the updated versions, but all you got to do is click get more brushes and it brings you to a website. Here you go. It's this easy. Gouache, splatter, rake, manga, whatever. I don't know. So I use a lot of these, some of these, I don't use at all, but like dry media is really great for coloring. Um, watercolor is really great for coloring. Gouache is. 
The splatter is really cool. Uh, cross hatches, not so much. Half tones, not so much. But like, yeah, uh, they're all there. You can pick through them. Um, there's there's the hot tip for anybody wondering. Uh, if there was a uh, visible men, I would be equally blown away. You're sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if there was a visible men tag, it'd be full of weirdos. Like you're probably be fine. Like. The visible men tag was a bunch of like angry idiots. <laughs> yeah, men are generally more visible by default. The visible men tag is like I posted this on my Twitter and I'm a guy. I didn't I did not need to tag it. <laughs> the halftones are awesome for halftones. They okay. Full disclosure, they may be awesome for halftones. However, what I use halftones for, they are not awesome for halftones. What I use half to tones in like Cave Carson as a cybernetic eye, like that stuff is like I'm using them as like large, chunky kind of like patterns that I'm like warping all over the place. Um, and like they're not good for that. But if you're drawing like like a manga book or you're like putting in uh a little bit of uh, half tones for uh, to help out a colorist that you may not have like a lot of faith in if you're like just starting out. Um, probably perfect for that. Um, Mick knows what's up. Yeah, the visible the visible men hashtag is is full of fucking weirdos. <laughs> uh, here's the thing, when when all the um, those kinds of like hashtags were, were floating around oh god like six months a year ago i don't even know at this point um what is time i don't know uh yeah this hashtags are are good sources if you love feeling lapped yeah man i actually uh so to complete the thought that i was just having um there were a couple of people who were like oh we're women have a visible visible black creators are having their thing visible women like i'm 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 an upset white man and i should be visible and like when you browse like upset hashtag visible upset white men uh that hashtag is sad let me tell you <laughs> it is it is not a fun romp you want to feel like you're lapping other people you can visit that hashtag <laughs> Anyway, now you know where I stand in diversity in comics. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I, you know, don't feel, don't feel lapped. Like, I don't know. Like at this point in my career, like I've seen people just as many like hot young artists like come up in the game and then just like melt down like not be able to handle you know the pressure of like deadlines and um making creating things in a consistent schedule like i've seen just as many artists young artists like not be able to like deal basically and like it takes them a while to get to the maturity level where like even though they have the skill like they can't necessarily make the work. Like making a Tumblr post is a lot different than like making a comic book on a regular basis, on a monthly basis. So um, you got to run, guys. Look forward to seeing where this ends up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to post it on the channel. Um, yeah, so I mean, don't feel lapped. I mean, like the other thing is too is like, I mean, aren't we all lapped by, like, Kirby, Mobius, Toth already? Like, what is even the point? Should we even just, should we just pack this thing up? Like, <laughs> comics as an art form has already peaked. Let's just all move on. <laughs> but what if you can't make deadlines? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Speed comes. It's just, it's just time and practice which is something that younger people don't have. Um, when you were suggesting that we come through and uh, figure out all the light sources of all the explosions, 
that is something that I, with experience of trying to get a monthly thing out the door, am like, no. <laughs> how about a, how about a hot cup of no? <laughs> uh, so yeah. Yeah, but they're at least dead. Yeah, well, you got that over them. They can't they can't actively lap you. They've just like already finished the race that you're just starting. <laughs> uh hold hold on one second, guys. I'm gonna mute you real quick. All right, all right, I'm back. <laughs> Hot cup of no, yeah. Uh, yeah, it needs to be said because some people legitimately have no idea about how much uh, being a woman gets you summarily dismissed. Yeah, I mean, like, by and large, it really, it really, really does. Man, when we were playing Sea of Thieves that one time and we, like, two ships crossing and we're firing cannonballs and then, like, Kate's yelling orders and, and then they were like, Hey, they got a they got a girl. It's like, oh my god, why, humanity, why? Like what? What? Yeah, different different genders exist. It's fine. Uh, you're gonna lurk and then hit the gym. Yeah, enjoy the stream. Catch you later. Yeah, later, Connor. Um. Yeah. All right. So we're, we're just kind of like getting into doing, uh, some of the highlights and stuff. Um, the inking is a little bit of a mess on the glove here, but we're, we're just kind of, kind of like ignore it. Um, maybe, maybe roll with it a little bit, a little bit of tooth, give it like a texture. Um, God, you were so pissed. Yeah. <laughs> I can understand why. Cause it's like, Man, I don't know. I'm a pirate. Like, we're all pirates. Like, chill out. God, it's so dumb. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how we got into that narrow space. Um, anyway, this is why uh, girls don't use voice chat. Um, I was watching um, a popular streamer, uh, Kiwo, play uh, some Sea of Thieves. And, like... She was getting shit as a girl for not having a cam. And she was like, she was like, you don't have a cam. Why don't you post? Why don't you post your image in my chat? How about that? And it's like, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to pass. And then it was like, and she can't win. You know, like, it's like if she posts her cam, then it's like, she's getting judged on her appearance. And if she doesn't post her cam, then she's getting like assumed judged. It's like a nightmare, you know? And like, if I didn't have a cam, nobody would say anything. They'd be like, Oh, Nick Flaherty's streaming. It's fucking ridiculous. All I'm saying is think about this stuff before you, before you say it. Preach. <laughs> we got the, we got the approval. <laughs> But I don't know. Hopefully those people that are like that are mostly children and not actual grown human beings. But you never know. Um, anyway, you should you should click the visible women hashtag. All that to say, you should click that hashtag. It's real good stuff. Oh, I remember what I was going to say before. I actually, the last time this visible woman hashtag went around. Um, yeah, gross. Right. Right, Pop. Uh the last time this visible woman hashtag went around, uh, I actually threw a couple of suggestions at Oni press for, um, for a couple of books because I was like, these women are killing it. And one of them was like a 20 year old girl. Like I say girl because I'm a 36 year old man, but like, you know, she was just like crushing it, crushing it. Um, and I was like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get better. I gotta, I gotta start making art again. That I feel like that's the sense of community on, on Twitter and seeing what everybody's making, uh, 
and I, I feel like at, by extension too, um, sense of community on, uh, from comic cons and stuff like that. Um, I feel like, uh, has motivated me immensely in the last couple of years to like really step up your game because like when you're at home and you're making like mediocre work or whatever, and you're like by yourself, it's, it's tough to be like, like you don't have any, you don't have any metric. You're here. You're like in at home by yourself, you know, but like when you go to a comic con, you realize, Oh, everybody saw this. Like, I'm interacting with an audience like right in front of me that all saw when I like phoned it in and it like motivates you to not phone it in. Like we talked about my uh, gut wrenching critique with um, uh, Jimmy Neutron from Nickelodeon magazine when I was in the studio, like that kind of critique makes me be like, Oh shit, I got to like step it up always. Like there is no time for slacking. Um, and it's important to remember that, that like the work goes somewhere and it counts for something and you should take pride in it and you shouldn't let, you should have like a quality filter. You shouldn't let everything out the door that, you know, isn't, isn't done. Um, if you can help it. I mean, I know deadlines are a thing. All right. We're getting, we're getting close. We got to do this guy. We got a couple other subtle things. We're going to tweak the explosions. Make them more explodey. Man, this stream, like, I got on my freaking high horse. Whew. Whew. <laughs> yeah, we're going to, but we're almost done with dread. Um, I'm just kind of gesturing this stuff in because uh, it's not going to be where your focus is. We can, like... Put a little bit of shine in there. Um, yeah, just like a little, little bling, a little bit, a little bit. Um, all right. So we do have uh, Brian Boland. We were talking about light sources before. So we don't have any rim light on the on the eagle here, or like we got a little bit on Jed, Dred's neck. But uh, we do have a little bit on the gloves. So why don't we, like, actually roll with that? A little bit on the gloves, a little bit here. We can put just, like, a little bit in, a hint. Uh... Yeah. We could we could try it in the, in the neck too. See see how it looks. Yeah. All right. We can, we can do something down here. I mean, if we're washing him in orange anyway, like this stuff is not going to feel. Oh my god! Why can I get, not get that line right? This stuff's not going to feel out of place. So. All right, um, this one looks a little, a little weird. We're gonna we're gonna see if we can tweak it a little bit. If it's a pain, we're gonna we're gonna move on. Um, you're currently in this weird art business class, and the teachers have been like, "Oh, stop worrying about what it looks like and just make things." Uh, post it on your Instagram. People will love it. Just like, no, dude, people will see this. Yeah. Well, to their to their credit. There is such a thing as like being overprotective of your art, like in thinking that everything is precious, but like it's a fine balance between like quality control versus like, you know, what people want to see versus, you know, like there's things that are appropriate. Like we talked about this in the, in the um, stream for Barry colors. Like there was stuff in there that is appropriate for an Instagram but not appropriate for a portfolio. And those are like two different contexts. Like you got to think about that stuff. A lot of the stuff on Instagram is like semi-temporary. Um, 
So you can post like a lot of process stuff. I post I post some process stuff up on Instagram every once in a while. Follow me on Instagram, I guess. We're talking about it. It's right up there. <laughs> um, above my head. Uh, this is going to be up on Instagram. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's a weird thing. So when I was just starting to make art, like when I was in high school and just like dipping my toe into everything, um, I, I like was afraid to try to ink something because the drawing was precious because I had achieved this thing and I was just like up my own ass about crap. Like I just I it made me scared to do stuff because I was like afraid that I couldn't reproduce it in some capacity. And the reality was is that was I was just like not drawing enough. And I took this uh, summer art program because I'm a nerdy weirdo. Um, and I didn't want to, you know, talk to other kids. I just wanted to make art. Um, if worrying about perfection is preventing you from publishing, yeah, then dial it back. But, uh, one of the green bros just posted a short talk about good enough. I don't know who the green bros are, but that's, that's definitely a thing. It's a, it's a fine, fine line though, because like you let a little bit compromise go by and then you let a little bit more and a little bit more. It's something you got to be vigilant with. Um, but yeah, so I, I went to this, I went to this art program, the summer art program. And like one of the, one of the things was like, we got a newsprint pad and this is something that like art schools do a lot. Um, so if you are in art school or, and have this experience, you, it's not unique. Um, um, but like, you know, if you never went, like, this is a thing that happens where they like teach you to loosen up. And they teach you to, but that is not how, yeah, yeah, that's not what he meant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, they teach you to loosen up. They teach you to like, um, kind of like not have uh, art be precious is like, you get like a notepad. So like I ha we got, we got a um, newsprint notepad, giant paper, put it on the easel. Um, I had a still life or something or a, a model posing. Um, and the model would change every 30 seconds. And then they were changing every 20 seconds. And then they were changing every 10 seconds. And then they were changing every five seconds. And so you really, you really like loosen up. You realize that like your drawings are not precious. You're going to make a ton more. And like, you know, that is important too. Um, that like when I was, uh, when I was in that class and doing that for the first time, it blew my mind, like how gestural you could get. Like, cause I was like so clenched and like detail oriented. Like I got gestural and some of those drawings, I was like, these are actually kind of good. I was like, why was I not doing this? Um, so I suggest you all do that. Okay. Where are we at? Dreads, dreads pretty much done. We're going to do some like shines and stuff on, on his Eagle and everything. Um, but let's uh, push these guys back into the building because uh, don't look at me because um, I don't want to render them. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna blue out this guy and this guy. I put this guy in his tidy whities I kind of enjoy that. <laughs> I don't know if that was the intention of Brian Boland. Um, we're gonna we're gonna knock him back with some blue. Uh, I don't know that we even have to render them because like, I, okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If we render this guy, we run the risk of like, if this guy has like shadows and highlights and all that kind of stuff, this is what I was talking about where I was like clenching up and I was like in the detail, like we have the power to render this guy. Should we render this guy? And the answer is probably no, because like, if we do that, then he's going to look like he is coming out of judge judge dread as a tiny man coming out of his shoulder. Like that's, it's not where we want to be. So, um, we're just going to move on from that and, uh, do some, do some explosion work. This is kind of like where this is like the last phase we're going to start doing special effects. Um, 
So let's let's do it. Uh, I also I think I'm gonna try to like blend the buildings into the sky back here. So we're gonna we're gonna try that too. That's gonna be full on experimenting though. Um, but for now, let's just select all the explosions by hand, creating riveting television because this is super interesting. Uh, give me one second. Hey, I'm back. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's use let's use the pen. Let's not use the mouse. Um, Cause we're in like kind of like weird shaped territory, and like you know, who's to say where this explosion begins and ends? Yeah, and like you know, this stuff doesn't have to be totally perfect because like we're going to add like shines on this stuff. And, um, I don't even know if we need to do the ones up there to be completely honest. Like they're kind of just like blending in. Um, in fact, we're going to deselect these. Uh, all right, let's, uh, but yeah, to, to what we were saying before, like when I was uh, a little bit, a little bit depressed and didn't realize it um, in my career when I was like kind of down on comics right now, I'm like, I'm like, you could, as you can probably tell, I'm really excited about comics and I want you guys to be excited about comics, which is why we do this. I want, I want me to be, I want me to be the fire underneath you to like make comics. Um, and I want to see those comics, post those comics. Uh, but yeah, I, I was like kind of, kind of down on comics for a while and I, I kind of didn't realize I was kind of down on everything. Um, I was turning out some bad work and my mentality was always, oh, well, you know, like we'll get them next time. But like, I wasn't going to cons. I wasn't like interacting with fans. I wasn't, you know, like basically like my work was never held accountable. Like I was never like. You know, I kept, I was good enough to like keep getting work, but I wasn't good enough to like get good work. Um, and so I was like, well, the penciler kind of sucked on this. So, you know, like, what are you going to do? And like, the thing that I've learned over the years is like quality control is a thing. People remember the last project you work on, you worked on. And, and like, even if the penciler like isn't great and you're you're an aspiring colorist and you're like trying to work jobs and you're you're figuring it out you know um to be honest you're giving me the stiff push push you needed yeah that's awesome yeah you are kicking ass kate you're uh posting in the um i can see you like getting out of your comfort zone which is awesome uh i'm 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 doing the same by the way, you can all join us in the Discord. We're doing sketchbook challenge. We're doing one sketch a day. Just like draw something once a day. And uh, Lord knows I've missed some days here and here and there, like as we've been working on it. But um, you know that stuff's that's not a big deal. Like miss a day, don't worry. Come back. Kick kick the next day's ass. Um, but yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, so like, I was kind of like, well, the penciler didn't do a great job. And like, my mentality was wrong. My mentality was like, well, this comic's do doomed from the start. So like, I'm just going to like, do good enough work where it's like good enough, I guess. And then like, I'm going to play some Call of Duty and then like, call it a day, you know? And what my mentality should have been is... That's awesome fish, by the way, that you fixed your internet. Um, what my mentality should have been was like, I want everybody that picks up this comic to be like, yo, the penciler like goofed it. But like Nick Filardi colored the shit out of this book, you know, like I should have been in that mentality 
Um, and given it's, it's tough to get into because like, you're going to be day in day out working on stuff that maybe you're not like super into, but like, you also have to like find something to love within the art. And I think that is an, also a really like important lesson that like, you know, for example, like judge dread is not a very serious comic. It's like serious, but it's not serious, but it's like kind of fun. Like, I think when I got out of college, I was like, if it's not Watchmen, like if we're not making Watchmen, I don't give a shit, you know, like what's the point. And and like, now I'm like, let's make weird crap. Like, you know, like anything, uh, not the colors this book deserves, but the colors this book needs. Exactly. <laughs> like now I'm like, you know, no matter what I'm working on, uh, no matter what the skill level of the people that I'm working that are around me, like I'm going to find something to love in, in that, like everybody who's working in comics has put some amount of love, some amount of strength into their books. Um, and I think finding that and highlighting that and loving that is like part of being a good colorist. I don't know. I'm like, man, I'm like dishing out the life lessons this stream. We went, we went from hedonism, uh, Nick Phil to, to, uh, life lesson, Nick Phil real quickly. <laughs> um, I'm trying not to get the debris cause I want the debris to stand out. Also remember in the beginning of the screen stream beginning of the screen. The beginning of the stream when I was like, hey, remember that toothy uh, black and white that we scanned in? I wonder how that looks over this stuff. So we're going to find out. But um, first. Man, I wonder how that that looks. Oh, it looks dark. It looks real dark. We goofed it. Don't worry about this stuff because... We scream, scream. <laughs> it always hurts the back of my throat. I can't. Uh, yeah, we're adding like too much gray. Like the texture's cool and all, but I mean, maybe if we shifted it to like overlay, it might be a little better. No, not really. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna roll with what we got here. That's that's good to know. Good to know. All right. So we've made our selections. We've deselected all the white, and we're just we're just coloring it right in there. Boom. We're gonna do this red. Um, it looks a little weird in some spots, but. We can kind of like take this kind of like chunky brush uh, pencil tool and just kind of like chunk it up so it looks like we know what we're doing. That's the key, folks. Always look like you know what you're doing. Nine times out of ten, that's all you need. Put a little, little chunk over there. All right, all right. Um, in order to do the the effects, we are gonna have to super black it. So let's do that. So we're gonna take all the black, um, select, modify, contract it one pixel, one pixel. Um, add a new layer, maybe eventually. Um, 60 60 40 because that's what everybody's using now instead of 80 60 40 uh and then we're gonna we're gonna add some explode explosionings um it's a technical term i learned it while i was in college uh it's rooted in um 17th century century uh french art explosionings 
uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna get in here and and be as French as possible. Um, all right. So if you look at this stuff, you're like Nick Flaherty. This looks terrible, and you'd be right. So let's fix that. The thing that's going on is that like the orange like like puff looks fine on like the yellow and the orange and the white here but it looks bad under the this undercolor so we want to take all of the all of the undercolor that we just made and we're going to sit switch it from 60 60 40 100 to 20 80 80 and before i put the 100 in that's that's cmyk by the way lesplosionings yeah exactly uh before I put before I put the hundred in here, you see it's like a reddish, rusty reddish hue. So we're gonna do one hundred. Now we can't use this for the whole page because if we just if we just fill it like this, um, the red when it hits print, like in here, is gonna print like a little rusty red. And I learned that the hard way. So don't learn that the hard way. Don't be like me. Don't be like past me. Be like present me. Um. So we're just going to take the uh, grad tool and we're just going to grad in, like warm up these explosions just a little bit in the blacks. This one's, this one's a big one. We're going to tweak this so that dread pops forward, by the way. All right. All right. So this is a thing that I used to do a lot in my career where I'd be like, okay, now we're done. Um, but the truth is, is that we're really not, by the way, I'm going to, I'm going to tweak this stuff a little bit. Um, maybe drop it down a little bit. Yeah. I'm like looking at it in two monitors, trying to figure out like where the best sweet spot is. All right. Um, so like a lot of times in my, in my early career, I'd, I'd be so overwhelmed with like all the balls that you have to juggle that I was like, at this point we're done. I got I need to move on to the next page cause I spent forever on here. But like what's happening with like this explosion in particular is that like it's overlapping with dread and it's flattening them out. Um, and that you can do yourself a great service by masking off dread. And uh, I'm not doing, I'm not like super careful here, but oh, I guess we don't want, we don't want this explosion down here. So we're just going to delete and now, now dread pops forward. Like it's a simple thing, but it like, it, it mattered. It mattered. Um, we're going to add some like little, uh, a little bit of splatter to the explosions. Um, gonna try to add a little bit of splatter, maybe on a new layer. So I'm gonna put down a lot of splatter and then just kind of like work it from there. Um, this is just a custom brush that I made. Uh, all I did was take a toothbrush and dab it in ink and throw it on paper and then scan the paper in and turn it into a brush. It's not rocket science. Uh, and I did that like I took that was like a half an hour of my time, probably like 10 years ago. And I'm like still getting mileage out of that thing. So let's. Uh... Kind of cover it up. All right. All right. I think we're close. I want to put a little bit of shine on Dread on Dread's badge, cause uh, that's cool. It's very cool. And we'll have to fix that with the black. Yeah, yeah. Now it feels a little a little goldeny. Um. Let's see. Do we need to tweak the? the buildings i mean we can try it but 
I, we might not even need it. Let's do um, a test run, a non-perfect, uh, just like gorilla ambush this thing. Um, <clears throat> grab the color from back here, 50% radial grad, just like on top of the buildings. That kind of looks good. Shit. We're going to have to do this, aren't we? Oh, oh no. We've made more work for ourselves. I could have got away with it. I could have got away with it. All right. We are going to very, very quickly um, kind of pop these explosions out. So that they're not faded away. This is gonna like kind of add another layer of exploding explosion explosions. Uh, maybe maybe that last one wasn't so hot. Man, do you think Dread is gonna arrest every single person in all of these apartment complexes? Cause uh. I really think he is. Like I said before on the on the first one, I read a story where he with a pistol arrested an entire ocean liner. <laughs> um Man, so like we got to Maybe we gotta think about this differently. Cause we're, we're missing these pieces, but I think I did it. I crafted this in such a way where I don't think I can really get into these pieces. All of them, even the guy in his undies falling from the building. Yeah, he's probably gonna get all of them. Yeah, I think I've crafted this in such a way where I've prevented myself from doing good work. So maybe don't be exactly like me. <laughs> Um, oh god, oh god, Photoshop. You all right, buddy? Photoshop? My dude? We're crashing. We're definitely... Yeah, we're doing a, the the computer overload again. Jeez. Just going to just going to wait patiently. All right. Just going to wait patiently while the stream slowly tanks into the ground. Oh my god. Just select another tool. Thank you. I think we're back. Uh, I think we're back. I think the, st the stream should be able to handle this. Man, every time I click over to Photoshop, it's like dragging. All right. Okay, I think I, I, I think I fixed it. I think we're good. Um, I don't know how this is gonna look on the VOD. Uh, things got a little weird for a minute there. Apologies, I did not do anything while you were away. Um, other, other than keep it real. That's all I did. Maybe maybe with uh, my CPU slowly shitting the bed, we should save it. Let's save it. All right. I think this is a good point to save it because I think we're actually, well, maybe we should put a little shine on the gun. Maybe a little bit, a little bit. 
Maybe the blue shine. Yeah, I think we're narrowing into uh, into finishing this. I'm just like, this is all just like little tweaks, little small details that I just want to get done before uh, we call it finished. Um, I think it'll look good if his the lines shaking the gun in the air are very animated. So we're going to do that with a little bit of white um let's uh erase the splatter that's on the logo we don't need that we don't need that all right i think we're good guys what do you think chat back me up are we good let me zoom in oh my god <laughs> Did everyone panic right then? I panicked. <laughs> I think we're I think we're good. Um All right. Let's let's save. Who who my potato computer. So sweet to me. Be good. Um all right. I think we're i think yeah ship it golden yep excellent uh so if you want to see this not filtered through you know obs and then filtered through to your computer monitor encoded in satellites and and bounced across the world uh follow me follow me right up there i'm going to be posting it on uh my instagram i'm going to be posting it on my twitter uh you can follow me in my discord uh the link for it is down below uh, if you scroll down on this Twitch stream, you'll find it. If you check the description on your YouTube, you'll find it. So let's, uh, let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. So uh, you'll be able to find it there. Uh, like I said before. Oh, God. I'm out of focus. Uh, Milk Wars number four, uh, the Cave Carson uh, issue. I do a lot of wild stuff in this issue and uh, it would be great if you picked it up, at least flip through it at the shop because uh, there's some crazy stuff. I tried to, uh, in the first couple of pages, mimic a matte texture uh, newsprint uh, alongside a glossy paper. Like I tried to make two different kinds of paper happen and uh, I think it was as pretty as close as I can pretty much get. Um, it's, uh, it was super fun. Uh, Langdon does a great job. Um, you should check it out. Uh, Cave Carson volume two is of course out. Uh, we're, I finished the first, uh, issue of the new Cave Carson run. It's freaking bananas. We're, we're doing a bunch of, we're doing a bunch of stuff that like, uh, we did not do in the first, first run. Um, we're continuing to innovate. So, you know, check that out. Um, we're going to be doing some exclusive YouTube content. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see it, I'm sure. If you're if you're watching this on, on Twitch, you can check it out if you want. I'm posting it in the Discord as well and on social media. Um, now, normally, normally, I exit the stream and I'm like, keep making comic. Keep making comics. But this is a dread stream. And we are not above the law. And so for now, instead of keep making comics, what I will say to you, good sir, good, good sir, or madam, is this. Court's adjourned. <laughs>